Hello everybody, Jim Arroyo here, Oath Keepers of Yavapai County and the Yavapai County Preparedness Team. Uh, I lead the still the most active Oath Keepers group in the United States. And if you guys have been hanging around with us for any period of time, you know we do a lot of work with threat assessment and analysis. And because we are very much involved with our current and former military and law enforcement, we get a lot of good information out there. But I've got something to share with you guys today on a threat assessment. And for the purpose of this video, it is uh, March the 10th, 2024, all right? So this information has been out for a while, but I wanted to bring it to you with not just a current threat assessment, but with what to do about it, okay? We are getting information that the U.S. government is planning on cutting off the debit cards to the illegal aliens. In other words, right now when they show up, they get a debit card, a cell phone, they get taken to a place where there's a shelter, and then they load those cards up every month. We were told as much as $2,000 a month they're giving these people on those cards. But also they're planning on removing them from the shelters that are already in existence. So. I want you to just think for a second, what will happen when you have all those types of people on the streets and their debit cards don't work, you think it's going to get a little squirrely out there? Here's some more information. This just came about fairly recently. I think it was about a week ago. Uh, the Darien Gap down in Panama. They had a riot down there. And lo and behold, they burned buildings of the UN camp. And guess what was in those buildings? They were the holding records of the migrants that had been coming through, Chinese and mostly from the Middle East. And all of a sudden, from all of those Middle Eastern illegals that they had some documentation on of who's coming through there, a lot of it was stolen and taken into the jungles. Most of it was burned and destroyed. So now there is virtually no records of all of these people that have left that Darien Gap in those categories. We don't know how extensive it is. We're just getting this stuff and putting it all together. But I want you to think about this. These are mostly fighting aged Chinese males and females and fighting aged males from Middle Eastern countries all countries that are not exactly friendly to us. So what they're doing, they're about to create a perfect storm. Now, some of you may have heard the term false flag, and lately you've been hearing more and more about a black swan event. And people are saying, well, they're planning a black swan event. Okay, number one, you don't plan a black swan event. Uh, look it up online and look at the true definition. But basically, it is an event that comes out of nowhere. No one was expecting it. Um, there was no way to prepare for it. And the average person has no idea how to deal with it, okay? That is a true black swan. It's something that didn't exist. And now all of a sudden this event happens and no one thought it could happen. What would be a true black swan event? Oh, I don't know. How about the detonation of the uh, volcano in Wyoming, okay? Could that happen? Yeah, but nobody's expecting it. <clears throat> what they're trying to do is create a serious problem. What we believe at this stage of the game is they are trying to stop the election. I have been listening to many people giving their threat assessment and analysis. Um, I listen pretty routinely to Lieutenant Colonel Steve Murray's channel on uh, Rumble and on uh, Telegram and he's been doing a series of round tables with some pretty high ranking military officers. And they are all in agreement that at this point, they are thinking that they're, somebody in the radical left that is running this government right now are planning on not having the election. The only way to get Donald Trump out of the way is we think there are three possible scenarios that we've analyzed. Number one, they're gonna have to put him in prison. They're gonna to have to prosecute him, throw him in the slammer, and that's it. He's not gonna be the president or, or the nominee. Number two, they have to take him out altogether. And number three, they'll have to create an environment in which they can declare a state of emergency, declare martial rule, what the civilian world calls martial law, and technically in the military world, it's called martial rule, where they suspend 
habeas corpus, they suspend the constitution and they don't hold an election. They did this in the Ukraine because of the war going on there. So what type of war would be logical that would stop the election? How about a civil war? How about an invasion or an event where Chinese fighting aged males decide to go and start taking orders from their leadership and start disrupting all of our uh, infrastructure? Would that not cause a problem great enough for the government to say, you know what, until we get this all stabilized, we're gonna go ahead and suspend the election, the Democrats stay in power, and that could go indefinitely. We don't know how long. So that is the actual assessment that's coming down. It's pretty well being repeated by everybody out there in the intelligence section. And we're talking about people who are former Intel or you know have some type of analytical capability, but that is the plan. And if that happens, we are talking about a scenario so horrendous to where we will go kinetic. If they take Trump out and put him in prison, if they take him out altogether, if they create an environment, we're gonna head for a kinetic civil war. No two ways about it. Now, again, the Oath Keepers of Yavapai County and the Yavapai County Preparedness Team do not condone violence of any kind period. We are not a militia. We don't condone a civil war. But that doesn't mean somebody's not going to start it. This is a big country, 330 or more million people, many of them armed, a lot of lunatics out there. Anything can happen. Now, I'm not going to say flat out that some crazy redneck in the South isn't going to kick this thing off. What they will do is make it look like that. That's very easy for them to do. I think the vast majority of gun owners are very stable and understand what this can lead to, and they're not about to start a civil war. That would just be stupid underlined. So if they need that to happen, what do they do? Well, gee, didn't they do this on January the 6th in Washington? Had a bunch of federal agents and agent provocateurs dressed up as Trump supporters saying they started all this? Yeah. That's right. Do not put it past the federal government to use federal agents or agent provocateurs dressed up as Trump supporters to start firing up places and saying, look, see what those crazy radical right wing extremists are doing. You doubt this? Look at the narrative that is coming out of the mainstream media and what is coming down from elected representatives in Washington, D.C. regarding those people that support Trump. If you're a Christian, you're a bad guy. If you support Trump, you're a bad guy. If you're a patriot or you love reading your Bible and you own a gun, you're a bad guy. Simple as that. I'm, I'm oversimplifying this for, this for the sake of brevity, but you understand what's going on. The idea is, is the right wing Christian conservative that's armed and loyal and patriotic and is a honorably discharged veteran or law enforcement officer, the radical left hates you, period. That's what's going on. And if we don't get prepared to deal with these problems, you're going to get caught in a real serious situation. So what do we do about it? Bottom line is, with the potential of an economic collapse, the potential of a monetary change, the obvious threat from foreigners coming in here. You're already seeing the violence increase from foreign nationals that are illegally in this country that we are bringing in. Yeah, that's right. I told you we're bringing them in. Did they not just recently, last week we got more details on this, that the reason the law, at a lot of the border crossing, they're showing a much lower rate of people crossing the border is because the federal government got caught sending aircraft into foreign countries, loading them up with the illegals and flying them into the United States and offloading them at airports and places where they could be sheltered, okay? Police stations have people sleeping on the floor. Airports, people sleeping on the floor. The government is bringing them in. So they don't even have to go all across the southern Texas border at Eagle Pass. That plane going over, yeah, it's filled with illegals and they're dumping them at the airports. How many? Well, we know every time the government releases some kind of numbers, they're very, very low. 
The last figure we got, 35 to 36,000 people have been flown into the United States, completely bypassing the Border Patrol. Okay, that's a fact. As this progresses, more and more are going to come in, and we're not talking about a few thousand people, guys. We're talking in the millions. And when we're talking fighting-aged Chinese males, fighting-aged females, fighting-aged other countries coming in, we're talking division-sized elements. Your average infantry division could be 40, 50,000 men. You're talking in the millions. That's a lot of division-sized elements that they're planning on arming and using to disrupt the American system, to disrupt our infrastructure, to create an environment where the government can stand up and say, well, you know, all these illegals that we helped get in here, they suddenly went crazy and they've created an environment where we're gonna just have to go ahead and suspend the election. It may be a few months, it may be six months or a year. Don't listen to that. They're not planning on putting it back, all right? Bottom line is they're gonna destroy the Constitution once they declare martial rule, all bets are off. At that point, this country could very well rapidly uh, descend into a kinetic civil war, and that's it. The, you don't put that genie back in the bottle, guys. You wanna know what that can look like? Study any country that has gone through that, and you will find out that it is not a pretty picture. So what should you be doing right now? Uh, what I'm gonna recommend is that you guys start thinking about your food storage. Once something like this happens, it can disrupt everything. If the government, and it's maybe not a matter of if, but when, the government decides to try to implement a CBDC, central bank digital currency, and the Congress says, nope, we're not gonna allow you to do that. Well, that's not gonna stop the dollar from being collapsed. The BRICS nations, and the BRICS are the Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, in addition to five other countries, including Saudi Arabia and Iran. Um, they are planning on not using the US dollar as a world reserve currency. That takes us into full collapse. When that kicks off and they create their own new currency, that's it, it's game over. Now, if there's no other means of being able to use cash, even if you're sitting on you know, an apple carton full of, of $100 bills, you can't take that to the grocery store because they're not gonna take it because the banks won't use it. So if that's no good and there's no central bank digital currency, how are you gonna be able to buy anything? Well, that's where the gold and silver can kick in. And we've talked about that and we'll go into that more in future videos for sure. But right now, food, that is your most critical thing you can stockpile right now, all right? And we get, we get these questions all the time. Right off the bat, the price of food is not coming down anytime soon. Okay? When the government tells you, oh, inflation is at 2 or 3% a year, uh, they're smoking crack, guys. It's not 2 or 3%. You all have been into grocery stores. You've seen what's happened with the price of fuel and heating oil and electricity and insurance. You're talking more 20 25%, and in some cases, much higher that, than that on certain items. So food prices are not coming down. Stockpile while you can. Get more food. People ask me all the time, well, how much do I need? Well, how long do you wanna eat? Okay, simple as that. The LDS Church has a very simple philosophy. A year's supply of food and two years supply of household goods. We have always promoted a minimum of 30 to 60 days worth of food. But we're gonna take that a little further because we know what can be potentially the dangers of trucks not moving and bringing food in. And by the way, did not uh, the trucking industry just tell New York that they're not gonna bring trucks in to New York bringing food because of what they just did to Trump and the fines and, and the dangers of being in there and the threat assessment of the migrants? Yeah, this is gonna get ugly. So um, how much do you need? A lot. Um, bug in versus bug out. Everybody knows that term. If you're a bug in, that's fine. You should be stockpiling to the ceiling. You should be filling your empty rooms in your house with as much food and water and medical supplies as you can possibly get. Um, what we recommend right now is 60 to 90 days 
of non-perishable food that you can rotate. This is stuff that you are used to having in your pantries, in your cupboards right now. Whatever your family is used to eating, stock that many times over, all right? You should be able to last, you know, the bottom line is how long can you last? You should be able to go several weeks without going anywhere near a grocery store. But some of you have gotten this idea over the decades that, oh, I need to go to the store two or three times a week to get something for dinner. Really? You're not buying properly, okay? You got plenty of big box stores out there where you can be stockpiling cases of green beans and peas and corn and other items that'll store for years. And you should not have to go to the store. Things like pasta, spaghetti sauce, they don't have a shelf life. You can store pasta inside of a cool, dark environment for years, and it's going to be fine. But you should have at least 60 to 90 days of that on hand. And as you're using it, you replace it so that you keep it at that. Long-term storable, freeze-dried versus dehydrated. All right. So a lot of people buy dehydrators and dehydrate their food. Um, that's great. That's a good way to go. Shelf life won't be near as long. Uh, freeze-dried foods things like stuff from My Patriot Supply or Wise Foods, um, that can last 25 years. Um, the difference is you're going to need phytonutrients to go with that, so you're going to need to sprout seeds to be able to supplement your dehydrated foods. That's critical. Um, you're going to need lots of water. Okay, We're not going to spend any time on water today, but that's a given. If you're not storing water, why have all that freeze-dried food, right? Um, store it in your house versus your garage because this stuff is heat-sensitive but also store spices, sauce mixes, spaghetti sauce that's canned, lots of pasta, and that way you can augment your meals and not get bored with the same old thing, okay? There is a ton of stuff on our website. Go to ycpt.org, go to our MeWe channel, there are, go to YouTube University. There is a ton of stuff on there on how to properly start storing bulk foods. You need to be doing this a long time ago. If you haven't started, you'd better get on it right now. Don't go buy gold and silver until you've got your pantry well stocked and you've got enough supplies on hand to take care of your family for two to three months minimal. And then once you get there, start building on that and build it up to six months, nine months. Then you get to a year's supply of food. And so you have enough on hand to grow a garden if you get hit during the winter time, all right? All right, guys, that's what I got. There's a ton of stuff available. There's so much going on in the world right now. It is so unstable. Get prepared now. That's the bottom line. All right, guys, have a great day and good luck.